Would you believe me if I told you this is what people have been posting about Gypsy Rose? Stop it. Get some help. Yeah, kind of insane. No, she's not a beauty guru, but rather known for her upsetting past and the actions she took against her own mother. First of all, Gypsy has already been cancelled. Well, sort of. Although most people are hoping, with time, Gypsy is able to live the most normal life she possibly can after her past. Some are criticizing her for inconsistencies that have been popping up as more and more documentaries and interviews come out. This is what at least a few users online have expressed, and by inconsistencies, they clarified that under oath at Nick Godajohn's trial that they did some adult dancing, if you know what I mean, in the movie theater bathroom as a plan to fall pregnant so Dee Dee would let them be together. But in the Lifetime documentary, she claims they actually didn't do the dancing because certain body parts wouldn't collaborate. This user also said Gypsy has changed what the last thing her mom said to her was multiple times, but they did also say that these inconsistencies could be due to memory or trauma related, but it does affect and poke holes for her credibility. They actually advised for Gypsy to be cancelled as soon as possible so she doesn't get into trouble with the parole board. And following a podcast Gypsy appeared on, some viewers accused her of being manipulative, which just fueled this general idea. I understand both sides of this debate. Should she have been cancelled for it? That's up to you. But Gypsy responded to the haters in the most throwback way possible because she posted this onto Instagram. Yeah, keep calm and ignore the haters. Her caption even read, those who choose to stay ignorant about my personal growth as a person and place labels on me do not influence my happiness. Spread love, not hate. She has kept this photo up and actually got a puppy just recently and I'm curious to know what your thoughts are about her Instagram keep calm post because personally I would be lying if I said I didn't think it was a little funny. Well girl how old are you? I'm getting nervous. Hold on, let's backtrack but hold on to that age thought. On Instagram Gypsy already began shouting out some people she knew and this actually caused people to leave a ton of comments under her photos. In a now deleted photo, Gypsy originally posted a selfie of her and her nephew with the caption, hanging out with my nephew Noah. And then she tagged his account before saying, girls, show my boy some love and hit his DMs. Only the age appropriate ones though, he's only 15. LOL. Although it was pretty obvious for some that her nephew must have asked for the shout out as he did quickly gain thousands of followers and the caption would lead some to believe that. Others were questioning his safety. It's not like Gypsy's a famous TikToker. She has done her time for her past, but regardless, it still happened and may not have been the best audience watching her social media. Yes, a ton of young teens making edits of her, but stranger danger. With all the backlash with those worried about Noah's safety, she then wrote, My nephew wanted me to post a picture and his parents and grandparents gave me permission to do it. It is all in good love. One person said, I love you, Gypsy, but please keep him safe. There's weirdos on here. And another person really went there and said, Miss girl, you of all people should know about the crazies you can meet online. And of course, this user is referring to Gypsy's relationship with Nicholas Godajohn, who she met online and later planned together how they would take Dee Dee's life. No matter the goal, I think internet safety is something we should always have in the back of our minds. And with the internet being used now more than ever, it is important to keep our children's safety and that includes Gypsy's nephew. I personally don't think Gypsy meant any harm in the situation. I just don't think she was thinking about safety when she should be. But I'm glad she did take the photo down and hopefully it was because she recognized the dangers rather than because the backlash she received. One of the first criticisms Gypsy faced following her release was actually targeted for her husband Ryan Anderson. The two got married back in 2022 after Ryan initially watched the HBO documentary about Gypsy and this prompted him to mail her a letter. They tied the knot behind bars but the day of Gypsy's release, he was right there with her at 3.30 am. If you don't mind waking up early for me, maybe you're the right one. Right away, paparazzi captured photos and Gypsy shared photos onto Instagram, which brought Ryan into the spotlight. Right away, people started to call the couple Lois and Peter Griffin as a way to mock his appearance. The public was canceling Ryan and even judging how they assumed his personality would be. I saw so many comments saying that he gives bad vibes, has a creepy look, and all that, and this was before he even said anything, and the only thing available was his physical appearance for people to judge, I guess. It was like Ryan was being cancelled for simply existing. He hasn't really done anything wrong that I am aware of at least. And he even told people before Gypsy was released that he was a little anxious about being in the spotlight because he is a very private person. But don't worry, Gypsy was not going to let her man get cancelled because she would defend him in her Instagram comments with the kind of iconic quote of Living my best life and y'all can't take that from me. 
and the D is as more and more time has passed, the public has started to see Ryan through a different pair of eyes as most of the comments I see now are actually praising him for being seemingly supportive and genuine. But that's not the only criticism Gypsy has got regarding her husband because yes, she is a free woman and can do whatever she wants, but many have expressed how Gypsy has never had time to herself in a way. Growing up, her mother was always right there with her. Then later on, it was Nick, who she was able to eventually act on the plan for the two that they created. And now that she is released from prison, she's already married to Ryan. And some just think she needs some time alone in order to truly grow as an individual. What do you think about this? Because I think Ryan could be good in the sense of her transitioning, but also she probably does need time to herself instead of relying on people for her whole life. Social media has given us memes, celebrities, and even cyber please. Wait, cyber please? Well, yeah, of course. Are you new to the internet, silly? Well, anyways, some were actually critical on Gypsy's online presence before she was even released from prison. Although social media is a great way to share things with others around the world, it is also the place where everything you say, do, or even acknowledge will be kept forever. <laughs> And a ton of people have had online discussions through Reddit about how harmful her online presence will be to Gypsy herself in the long run. Although Gypsy is now free, she is still not as quote unquote normal as people like you and I. Her past, especially her relationship with her mother Dee Dee and the act she committed with her ex has affected her from a very young age. And I'm no specialist, but I'm sure she must be emotionally damaged and all the traumatic events she's been through has impacted her everyday life since then. Plus she spent eight years of her life behind bars, which although you do get social interaction, it's not the same as living an actual free life. She wasn't freed from prison until December of last year, making her 32 years old. And she was just 23 when the night Dee Dee's life would be taken from her. That is almost 10 years already and since she was only a few months old, her mom was already claiming she had a ton of health issues. So for her whole life, she has never been really normal and now she's finally given a chance to live a normal life. Much of it has been spent online. Many people just think she should live her life offline and stay in therapy, but on social media, people have been looking up to her and treat her like an internet personality. And in 2024, cancel culture is very much alive as it has been for years. I know we already talked about her social media presence, but another cancellation waiting to happen is her influencer career. Within days of her release from prison, a TikTok user posted a video about her own 2024 predictions, and her prediction was that Gypsy would be collaborating with Kim Kardashian, more specifically as a model for her Skims shapewear brand. Not only did this video gain thousands and hundreds of views, but the TikToker made a follow up video of the North and Kim TikTok account actually liking her Gypsy Rose Skims model prediction. This ultimately means either Kim or North gave that post a like, and if it was North, she could probably convince her mom to do anything. The TikTok also shared how the whole campaign would align with Kim's views of justice reform, as she is a lawyer as well. But of course, both both Kim and Gypsy are quite controversial for their online presence already and whenever a controversial celebrity collaborates with anyone, they get some of that backlash as well. The Kardashians although have quite the money, they also have quite the haters and mixing that with Gypsy's current spotlight and controversies, it would either be a PR nightmare or a business win. Plus Gypsy has talked about how she actually has tried to reach out to Kim in the past. Back in November before she was released, she reached out through Twitter expressing gratitude for recommending the HBO documentary about her case. And in that same tweet, Gypsy did mention the idea of teaming up with the billionaire to bring tangible change to the justice system. Although some people call Gypsy attention seeking, sources close to her have insisted that her commitment to using her platform for prison reform is actually genuine as it is one of her top priorities since her release. No words from Kim yet, but I guess we'll see. I think right now Gypsy has kind of tiptoed into cancellation because I'm sure it would be hard for her to avoid as she does have a controversial past. But I wouldn't consider her cancelled like others because she still has quite the following and her comments are not yet flooded with backlash. I do think it's important to her to maybe take a step back as she has good intentions to become an advocate, but maybe she should prioritize her own growth first. I obviously want all your thoughts surrounding this because everyone has different opinions. Has Gypsy Rose Blanchard been exposed for controlling her husband? It seems like everyone is turning on her at the moment, all because of a viral 
clip that's been going around on TikTok. So during an interview, she was basically caught telling her husband to shut up when he says something a little embarrassing about her. Gypsy is talking about what it's like spending all those years in prison and the fact that she's changed a lot over that time period. She then jokes around and says, oh, I went from 19 to 32 so quick. Jeez, I can't believe I got so old. And this is when Ryan says, you never went to school either. Gypsy is clearly very embarrassed about this comment and she quietly tells Ryan to shut up. But she says it under her breath while she's still smiling at the camera. After that, her husband looks completely defeated and he just puts his head down refusing to speak. At other points in the interview, you can actually see Gypsy squeezing his arm when she wants him to be quiet. And even though the quality of the video isn't that great, it's pretty clear that she's found a way to stop him talking whenever she wants to. The whole thing seems a bit like a toxic relationship. But not only that, people in the comment section seem to believe that Gypsy Rose is becoming just as controlling as her mother. Now let's take a look at some of the top comments on that video. One person wrote, Gypsy needs to be in therapy, not doing multiple interviews. And Gypsy is shushing Ryan the same way her mother did to her. She's doing the same nudge that Dee Dee did when she'd hold Gypsy's hand. Another person wrote, Gypsy is manipulative. She learned from her mom. If they break up, he's going to spill the beans. Now this is a pretty crazy characterization, but not everyone thinks the same way. Of course, there are some people defending her in the comments as well, saying that Ryan deliberately tried to embarrass her by saying that she never went to school. Either way, it's obvious that these tell-all interviews are not really the best thing for their relationship. For some reason, the media wants to talk to both of them, but what they end up talking about most of the time is Gypsy's life before prison. And obviously that's something that Ryan really has nothing to do with. But is it really that surprising that fans are turning on her now? The case, as we know, led to a media frenzy. Many documentaries and films were made about Gypsy and her mother, including the miniseries The Act and the famous documentary Mummy Dead and Dearest. There are countless podcasts that have been released over the years detailing the case, and people just can't really seem to get enough of it. With this fame, even before she was released from prison, many young people have fully embraced Gypsy into stan culture or obsessive fandoms. There were countdowns to her prison release and videos glorifying her. After she started her social media presence, comments under her TikTok videos read, we love you Gypsy Rose, and people were calling her an absolute queen. But as we all know, fan culture is complex. Fans are often dedicated to a person and invested in how that person acts. Many think of her rise to fame as disturbing, dystopian, and strange. One TikTok creator called Veronica Skaya posted a video looking at her and the influencer pipeline, saying, we want her to perform for us. She actually predicted that once Gypsy gains too much fame and popularity online and starts to receive things like brand deals, people will start to turn on her, wanting her to be humble. And that seems to be exactly what's happening right now. Of course, some people just hope that she stays off of social media altogether and takes the time that she needs to reacquaint herself with the world. Right now, she has 17 videos on her TikTok account with over 510 million views. And she's created multiple viral audios. The attention that she's gotten in the past three weeks is just pure insanity. So it's no surprise that people are starting to question who is this person that is so admired? She's still very new to social media and already Gen Z is obsessed with her. In response to that, she said, I'm coming into this brand new. I feel like I'm a new baby bird on the internet. I don't even know how to do all the emojis. I think they relate to me in a sense because I'm coming out and experiencing things for the first time. So all of this is just a first time experience, which is where that appeal is. The fact that she's learning about her identity while Gen Z is also learning about their while she went on The View, Gypsy spoke about her life in prison and her plans to use her platform to advocate for other victims of Munchausen by proxy. So during the interview, she said, if there is someone out there watching right now, please listen to me. Heed my words that you are not alone in this situation. There are other ways out. I did it the wrong way. And this is when things get a little awkward because she gets interrupted by Joy Behar, who seems to forget that Gypsy actually committed a real crime. She said, no, honey, no, 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 don't say that. You had no choice, really. And in response, Gypsy said, well, I did. I did something wrong and I paid my dues for it. It was only at this moment that Joy seems to remember what actually happened in the death of her mother because then she says, oh, you mean that part? Oh yeah. Never mind. Of course, this part of the interview went viral because of how ridiculous it was. At this point, Anna Navarro then steps in and feels the need to say that the crime itself was wrong, which just speaks to how confused Joy really was. It's great that she was siding with Gypsy, considering the fact that she was a real victim of her circumstances, but the fact that she casually almost justified the crime is a little weird. And many other celebrities have been reacting to her release from prison, like Patricia Arquette, who portrayed Gypsy's mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, 
in the 2019 drama series The Act. She's now spoken up about her reaction when she heard Gypsy was being released. She said she's all grown up and she's been through a lot and there's a weird feeling of art imitating life and then the reality and I think from someone who had a very specific difficult childhood to come into this age of Instagram craziness, TikTok, I don't know, I hope it's not too much. Patricia hopes that people are gentle on her and that she's able to enjoy her freedom because no one should ever go through that. She also said that although she was fascinated by Dee Dee and Gypsy's story because of the details of it and how they were so unnatural, apparently her own children were initially against her playing character, who as we all know had Munchausen syndrome by proxy. She explained that they all knew the story and they did not want her to portray someone like that on screen. Apparently her kids were concerned that she was actually going to turn into the character once she played her. But of course Patricia ended up taking that role despite all the skepticism. And she received an Emmy and a Golden Globe for her portrayal, so the decision paid off in the end. Joey King also wished Gypsy well after her release from prison. Joey actually played Gypsy in Hulu's series The Act, and she was recently approached by photographers asking for her opinion on the news. She reluctantly answered by saying, I'm so happy that she's released, I'm so happy for her. She deserves freedom. Although she did dodge questions about whether or not she has spoken to Gypsy or has any plans to in the future. Some fans online have been joking about the fact that Gypsy must hate Joey because of the way that she portrayed her in the series. From the outside looking in, it's clear that she did a lot of research for the role, like the voice was spot on and so were all these subtle mannerisms. But even though she put a lot of effort into it and did a brilliant job of acting, there is still that ethical question of whether or not we should even be making these true crime stories all for entertainment. Thankfully Gypsy herself hasn't actually watched that series and she says that she has no plans to do so. When she was asked about her decision, she said it's because she had to actually live through it. I mean, after all, she suffered her whole life, now she's finally free from it, there's just no reason why she would want to revisit that place again. It's going to take years for her to truly move past everything that's happened, which is why it sounds traumatic for her to even watch the story based on her own life. She also spoke up about the biggest misconception in the case, which is apparently the way that her mom was portrayed on screen. She said, I think people tend to forget, or maybe they don't even know, that the reason why my mom was able to snow blind the doctors so much and the community is because she was so friendly. In the shows, they're portraying her as mean all of the time, and that's not how she was. According to Gypsy, she was very charming and very relatable. She would give a hug to anyone, she liked to cook for people, her personality was bubbly and friendly to the outside world. But of course, we don't actually see what happened behind closed doors, where she was a completely different person. Others like Amanda Knox have also stepped forward to defend Gypsy Rose, and says that her return to normal life is kind of like a new prison, the prison of public opinion. The author and activist was convicted of the 2007 hit involving her roommate Meredith Kircher while she was studying in Italy. The now 36 year old was freed from prison in 2011 and returned to a normal life. But she says trying to return to normalcy after being incarcerated was difficult. Amanda says she believes that Gypsy Rose's sudden rise to fame and the circumstances surrounding her mother's passing might make it difficult to overcome her years in prison. In a piece for the Free Press, Amanda wrote, when I look at Gypsy, even though she was guilty and I was innocent, I see she is blundering into freedom in the exact same way I did. I've learned that I am more than the worst thing that ever happened to me, but where there is value in sharing my story with others, I'm entitled to do so. The same goes for Gypsy. Amanda went on to say, now that she's admitted to what she's done and served her time, she doesn't owe anybody anything. According to experts, Gypsy was a victim of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Dee Dee falsely claimed that she suffered from an array of illnesses, including leukemia and muscular dystrophy. Like we saw in the series, her mother shaved her head, forced her into a wheelchair, and even had some of her teeth removed and paraded her at charitable events like a sickly child, including fully paid trips to Disney World. All because she wanted to be a caretaker, she lied about an actually induced illness in her daughter. The truth about the situation only came out after Gypsy arranged for an online boyfriend to take out Dee Dee in 2015. Now that all of this is behind her, and of course she's just trying to move on with her life like anyone else would in this situation. This is crazy. So Gypsy Rose Blanchard's ex-boyfriend is finally speaking out. The man who fatally attacked her mother and refers to himself as Mr. Smiley. He wrote a bizarre email to the Post last week explaining his side of the story just days after this new documentary aired. Nicholas Gojon started the letter by saying, I want people to know that I am not lost in the ether of all of what is going on with whom shall not be named. I am just being patient for my true time to speak. When he was asked about Gypsy's new found fame, marriage, and what life has been like behind bars, he only said, I must be conscientious about my decisions. A lot of these questions will be answered 
answered in the foreseeable interview at the right time, which is not now. In the email, he seemed to be polite and almost childlike, using smiley faces about six times. At the end of the letter, he wrote, stay positive, healthy, and safe. Nicholas has been silent since Gypsy was sprung from prison on parole last month for convincing him to take out her mother following years of medical trauma that she inflicted upon Gypsy. But of course, she wasn't actually unwell, and her mother had been lying about her symptoms. Experts believe Dee Dee's behavior stemmed from the disorder called Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Because she wanted to be a caretaker, she lied about and actually induced illness in her daughter. The truth about the situation only came out after Gypsy arranged for an online boyfriend to take out Dee Dee in 2015. By now, many people know about these crimes, which were covered in the HBO documentary Mummy Dead and Dearest and the Hulu TV series The Act, starring Joey King. Before the incident, Gypsy's mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, forced her to pretend that she suffered from leukemia, muscular dystrophy, and a list of other very serious illnesses. But we'll get more into that a little bit later. Since her release from prison after serving less than 10 years, Gypsy has done a series of high profile interviews along with her husband, Ryan Anderson, who she met while she was in prison. And she's been very active on social media recently, which has been met with mixed reactions. In a comment on Instagram, she gushed about her love life and defended her husband from backlash, writing, they jealous because you are rocking my world every night. Yeah, I said it, the D is fire. Happy wife, happy life. Gypsy Rose Blanchard has been a prisoner twice in her life, once as an inmate and before that at the hands of her mother. After serving over eight years behind bars, she is now ready to start fresh and experience freedom for the first time. But she felt that she has to set the record straight about her past before she could actually step into her future. In her new docuseries, The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, the now 32-year-old woman tells her own story in her own words. She said, I see myself today as someone trying to come out of prison and start a new life. I'm just trying to remake myself or reinvent myself into something that my family could be proud of, that my husband could be proud of. She says that she doesn't think she's quite there yet, but she's lacking this new version of herself. Gypsy's story has blanketed the media, and everyone from true crime bloggers to court TV anchors have dissected the case. When talking about this documentary, she said, I wanted to put out something that was very accurate. I wanted to put out something that was the truth. So much of what has already been put out there was either by people that honestly didn't know the ins and outs of my case or my life. Gypsy explained that ultimately, she is the source because it happened to her, and no one has a right but herself to share her story. She now feels that she's emotionally stable enough to talk about it, and she doesn't want to keep being haunted by the past. She also spoke up about the biggest misconception in her case, which was the way that her mother was portrayed. She said, I think people tend to forget, or maybe they don't even know, the reason why my mom was able to snow blind the doctors so much and the community is because she was so friendly. In the shows, they're portraying her as mean all of the time, and that is not how she was. According to Gypsy, she was actually very charming and very relatable. She would give a hug to anyone. She liked to cook for people, and her personality was bubbly and friendly to the outside world. But then, of course, we didn't really get to see what happened behind closed doors, where she was a different person entirely. And now, even though she's trying desperately to move on with her life, there are so many questions that remain. Gypsy explained that she still has questions about all the surgeries that she's had, since she hasn't even had a chance to look at her own medical records in full detail, and doesn't fully understand what was done to her medically, all the procedures that she had as a child, because her mother lied to doctors. She also has questions for her own family about things that happened before she was even born. In the docuseries, there's a number of times when family or professionals could have stepped in and removed Gypsy from her mother's care. And she's now speaking about why that never happened. She feels a big part of it is that there were people that had suspicions, including her family, but nobody wanted to rock the boat. It wasn't brought up to other people and it just wasn't talked about. So people kept their suspicions to themselves just for fear of upsetting her mother and ultimately pushing them away as friends. She does believe that certain doctors also had their suspicions, but at the end of the day, it also has to do with money. She said they were making a lot of money off of her, and in their profession, that came first. At one point though, CPS did come to her house to check on her, but they were asking the wrong questions, saying things like, show me your arms, show me your legs, checking for bruises. And at that point, her mom had never actually hit her. So of course, CPS didn't end up doing anything. They just came the one time, and then they closed the file. Unfortunately, this visit caused Dee Dee to become increasingly more paranoid. She actually went as far as to remove the doorbell on the door because she was just so worried about them coming back. Now you might be wondering, did Gypsy hold any grudges against her family members for not removing her from her mother? Well, not really. She says that she doesn't hold anything against anyone now.
now and she's told the rest of her family that she doesn't blame them because she was so young when it all happened. Also, they were just as much in the dark as everyone else was. Now, onto a more positive part of her life. The fact that she's happily married and absolutely adores her husband. Brian Anderson explained that his life after her release has also been a whirlwind. Quote, I've waited for this girl to come out for so long and now she's home. It feels great to have her here. The support we've been getting from people has been tremendous. I can't thank people enough for everything. They love my wife just as much as I do. Brian explained that there are many things he's looking forward to in their new life, like just being a normal married couple. Although for him, the most challenging part is when people make comments out of context and they run with it, like making TikToks about something that he might have said, except he feels that they took it the wrong way. In this way, everything that he says is under a microscope and it's one of those things that he's just not used to. He does feel overwhelmed sometimes. And Gypsy said for her, she's just coming out of prison after eight and a half years and everyone is well aware of her story before that. But she's still very new to social media and she's on a learning curve right now. So when she comments or even likes someone's post online, she still has to realize that it would be seen by millions of people. And the rewarding side of that though is that she has this huge platform which she can use for good. And that way, she in that way, she says it's kind of like a superpower. She was asked why she thinks Gen Z is obsessed with her on social media. And in response to that, she said, I'm coming into this brand new. I feel like I'm a new baby bird on the internet. I don't even know how to do all of the emojis. I think they relate to me in a sense because I'm coming out and experiencing things for the first time. So the things that Gypsy is doing now, she really should have been doing as a teen, but obviously she didn't get the chance to do that. So all of this is just a first time experience for her, which is where the appeal might be, the fact that she's learning about her identity while Gen Z is learning about theirs too. At this point, the reporter brings up the fact that she used to love cosplay and dressing up a lot before she went to prison. In response to that, she said, looking at old pictures of me wearing different costumes and stuff, even though the interest is there, I can't help but have a small part of me that still feels like when I put on a costume and put back in that time. But that's just something that she's going to have to work through with a therapist because she says that she still has a lot of triggers that might be extremely subtle and that could potentially be one of them. Ryan said that she probably wore those cosplay outfits and costumes to get out of the current life that she was living with her mother. So it was kind of like an escape. But she loves who she is now as a woman and as a person. Gypsy agreed with this and said, even though I've got a major interest in cosplay and everything, it's beautiful to look at, but I don't feel the need to change my identity whereas I did before. That interest in cosplay is actually how she met her ex-boyfriend who, as we know, would eventually carry out the attack on her mother. So in 2011, Gypsy tried to get away from Dee Dee by running away with a man that she'd met at a science fiction convention, but she soon tracked them down via mutual friends. According to Gypsy, she then smashed her computer and physically restrained her to the bed after they returned home. She eventually managed to get back online and joined a Christian dating site where she met Nicholas. She told him the truth about her mother's actions and ended up asking him to take out Dee Dee so they could be together. In June of 2015, he came to her house and committed the crime while Gypsy waited with her ears covered in the bathroom. The two of them then returned to his home in Wisconsin where they were eventually found by police. After the events of that day, many people who'd known Gypsy wondered why she had gone so far as to completely remove her mother from the equation. Since she could walk, she could simply expose her lies by standing up in public. But Gypsy has been conditioned to think that no one would believe her. She said, I couldn't just jump out of the wheelchair because I was afraid and I didn't know what my mother would do. I didn't have anyone to trust. The fact was that she had spent her entire life being controlled controlled and monitored by her mother. She wasn't allowed to go to school. Although she was, an, although she had normal intelligence, Dee Dee told everyone that her daughter had a mental age of someone much younger. When they were out in public, Dee Dee constantly held Gypsy's hand and squeezed it when she wanted her daughter to be quiet. Experts in Munchausen syndrome by proxy said that her life was completely and totally controlled by her mother, to the point where it could be compared to a hostage situation. And in that way, the crime that occurred was just her trying to gain an escape from this horrible situation. Thank <laughs> you.